The Pentagon is mad about ULA Vulcans much delayed. This rocket is the reason why various national multi-billion dollar projects have been grounded for years. Many ambitious U.S. plans to regain technological leadership over China have come to a standstill. One more time, SpaceX is called for rescue. So, what exactly happened? Why did ULA end so badly? How will SpaceX turn around? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Both the Pentagon and the whole U.S. have been falling into an ironic situation. While our rival, China has been accelerating its activities in outer space more than ever, we continue to feel concerned and blame each other without being able to show an actual effective solution for dozens of current issues. Everything is caused by this agency, ULAA joint venture of Boeing and Lockheed Martin, and was formed almost 20 years ago to provide the Defense Department with assured access to space. This defense contractor is one of the Pentagon's key partners in launching national security satellites into space. But currently, it is recognized as not being able to meet the needs to counter China and build the arsenal in orbit with a new rocket that ULA has been developing for years. On May 13, Air Force Assistant Secretary Frank Cavelli sent a letter to the heads of Boeing's and Lockheed Martin space divisions. By unusually blunt terms, he said, I am growing concerned with ULA's ability to scale manufacturing of its Vulcan rocket and scale its launch cadence to meet our needs. Currently, there is military satellite capability sitting on the ground due to Vulcan delays, he wrote. In 2020, ULA, along with SpaceX, secured a multi-billion dollar contract from the U.S. Space Force. The National Security Space Launch NSSL Phase II contract requires ULA to launch 25 missions by the end of 2027. However, Vulcan's lack of certification has resulted in a backlog of those 25 missions to date. As the Air Force Assistant Secretary said in the letter, 90 days is a needed time for both Boeing and Lockheed Martin corporations to work together to complete an independent review of ULA's ability in this case. So what's wrong with ULA and its new brand rocket? Vulcan is a program the Air Force is deeply invested in because it serves a strategic purpose by replacing ULA's Atlas V rocket in the National Security Launch Fleet. This transition is mandated by a 2016 law that prohibits the U.S. military from using launch vehicles reliant on the Russian-made RD-180 engine. By the way, ULA targeted a reusable type of rocket engine for Vulcan's first stage, and they chose American-made BE-4 engines from Blue Origin. This is truly their first mistake. The final engine selection by ULA happened in September 2018 with the goal of Vulcan's maiden flight in 2021. However, the BE-4 rocket engine was repeatedly delayed, slipping the debut flight to early 2024. Another culprit involves customer payload, which takes longer to complete than previously estimated. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane, the CERT-2 flight's payload, has not been ready after over a decade. This likely threatens Vulcan's second mission timeline, which is originally scheduled for mid-2024. Honestly, to be certified by the U.S. Department of Defense or DOD, Vulcan is compulsory to perform at least two successful launches. They had an impressive debut in January, and now they are looking to launch CERT-2 as soon as possible. Nevertheless, with the current situation, what could they do? Finding an alternative payload? Yeah, it's exactly what the Pentagon offers. A dummy payload could be a perfect selection, but some people dislike the method. So, how about you? Should Vulcan carry a mass simulator in CERT-2, such as a Cherry Tesla Roadster with a dummy inside, looking similar to the one that was atop the Falcon Heavy in 2018? Say yes if you like this funny idea. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. Even the company itself has shown clearly its weakness in manufacturing, in contrast with its competitor SpaceX. Although suffering nepotism in the rocketry, meaning it won only the remaining 40% of the Phase II contract, what space has done so far could humiliate any experienced contractor. It has been flying its reusable Falcon 9 rocket at a much higher rate than ULA and for nearly half of this year alone. SpaceX has marked the workhorse rocket's 50th mission. This is an incredible number for any space launch company in the market today, especially for ULA, which launched only three rockets last year as it transitions to Vulcan. 
Both are now competing for the next round of Pentagon contracts, a highly competitive procurement worth billions of dollars over several years. The negative impact of a fixed-price contract like the NSSL Phase 2 has dealt a heavy blow to the ULA's financial status. The tough competitive market is due to the emerging wave of low-cost commercial rockets that have overwhelmed the expensive and ineffective rockets of the older generation. The gradual fall-in of Boeing in recent years also contributes to this disaster as a result of the domino effect. Although the company has tried to reassure the public by making up positive news such as 70 sole launches on Vulcan, the attempts to expand factories and launch site, or Vulcan promising to be much less expensive than the Atlas V rocket, but most of them are just placebos. Over the past five years, the company has had an average launch cadence of fewer than six launches per year. In this case, the Air Force will likely continue to depend on SpaceX for a long time, even though the government hates monopolies. But what can they do right now? To handle the military satellites that are slated for Vulcan, the Pentagon could consider transferring some of them to Falcon Heavy or Falcon 9. A significant challenge to this idea is that the military's payload requires vertical integration, but SpaceX can't do that yet. SpaceX currently uses a horizontal fixture to take rockets to the launch pad, and the payload is inserted while the rocket lies horizontally in the hangar. Therefore, one of the requirements for the Phase 2 contract is that SpaceX must have the capability to do a vertical payload integration at their launch site. In 2020, SpaceX planned to build a new rocket mobile service tower at NASA's Kennedy Space Center Launch Pad 39A in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The massive tower structure will enclose the rocket in a safe, vertical position to integrate the payload. The tower will be able to move the rockets vertically to launch Pad 39A, as well as provide a safe environment for SpaceX teams to insert large satellites vertically inside the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets fairing. It will be 86.5 meters tall and 36 meters wide and feature an enclosure to completely encapsulate a rocket. But how far along SpaceX is in designing its vertical integration hangar at the Cape? As far as I know, there is not yet any construction work happening for this building. Perhaps they already have the design but haven't started to work on it. They're most likely waiting for a payload that requires it. Since the DOD gives them long lead times for launches, it shouldn't be difficult for them to assemble the mobile service tower before they need it. It appears that SpaceX will pick up the vertical integration buildings at SLC-37 and SLC-6 and combine them with Falcon Heavy pads. SpaceX took over the lease of SLC-6 at Vandenberg from L3 Harris last year. FAA started an environmental impact statement for Starship launch at SLC-37. The military also prepares a backup plan for unexpected situations. In evidence, development setbacks with Vulcan forced the Space Force to adjust launch assignments, resulting in a current split of 54% for ULA and 46% for SpaceX instead of the previous rate of 60 and 40. In the future, if they want to reallocate this proportion one more time, the construction of the mobile service tower must be accelerated. And I'm pretty sure that it is not a big deal for a rabbit like SpaceX, but instead, the problem is how the government shuffles its paperwork. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time 